家好，欢迎来到我们的心理大家直播。今天呢，我们心理大家直播来了一位心理学的非常大的一个大咖，就是我们的艾琳·赛琳女士。那 Dr. Alan， 那 First， can you say hello to everyone？ I can say， 你好。Wow. I can say hello to everyone.、Yeah. Hello, welcome to our world. OK， 那接下来呢，跟大家一起来介绍一下我们这位。Dr. Selin， 我们的 Dr. Selin 呢，师从美国存在心理学之父罗洛梅。那同时，他也曾经在美国的心理学会担任人本主义分会的会长，创造性呢，将全人理念和舞动治疗是结合在了一起。目前已经从事了四十多年的舞六舞动治疗的一个工作，在以色列呢，也进行了十五年的创伤治疗的工作。去年又把他的专业带到了约旦，和那里的叙利亚难民一起舞蹈，被公认为是极具天赋。的舞动治疗大师。那今天呢，我们邀请到 Dr. Sally 来到我们的心理大家直播，就是和大家一起来聊一聊舞动治疗，以及哎，如何才能促进我们青少年的一个全面发展。你好 ，I am Dr. Eileen Serlin. I'm a psychologist and I'm a dance therapist. I live in San Francisco in the United States. And I teach here in Beijing at the China Institute of Psychology. Always danced in my life. I do dance, so I've traveled to different countries, and I love getting to know the culture and the people dancing. Much later, I studied psychology, but it was always missing something. It was only about words and the mind, and it was missing the body. Dance movement therapy and humanistic psychology brings the together, and so we are going to talk about verbal and nonverbal communication, how to understand the spirit of the body. Through dance movement therapy, how to get to know yourself better. Dance movement therapy is a combination of dance and psychology. It's the therapeutic use of movement, which furthers the emotional, the cognitive, social, and physical integration of ourselves. Dance movement therapy is a non-verbal way of interacting. And communicating with other people. Here is a photograph of our class. We're practicing nonverbal communication. Where we can sense each other's movements and respond. It's like a dialogue in movement: speaking, responding, speaking, responding. And we train the body to be sensitive to other bodies. This is our tool. Here is a photograph. This is the finish of our class where we end together. The class is always a combination of working in a group. People become very sensitive to each other. They support each other. We look at things like interpersonal space, how much space people take up, 
Some people like small, some people take up a lot of space. This is like your personality shows up in movement. But you can also see by the harmony of this group that we can also harmonize with other people. And this is a big task in life for all of us, how to be ourselves, how to know ourselves, but still find a way to be in a group, in a family, in harmony, without losing who we are. So the application of dance movement therapy It's for personal growth. First, we go through an analysis, just like in psychotherapy, we go through a verbal analysis. How do I know myself? What are my personal qualities? What do I need to develop more? Um, so for personal growth, it's a very useful way to know oneself. It's helpful in schools. We help students learn about themselves because some people learn through words. Other people learn through images. More artistic people learn more through pictures and images. Some people learn through the body. That's kinesthetic. So we all have different styles of learning. And this helps us in the schools how to learn in all different ways with the body as well. We work with parenting. We work with Sometimes how to hold babies and how to play with children so parents and children become more in harmony together. The same thing in family and marriage therapy is how a couple can work with each other, can live in small spaces and not get in each other's ways. And families, how we can promote harmony in families. We work a lot in these days in the school system, also in families, in the business world. Everyone suffers from stress in the modern world. We work with breathing, how to slow down your breathing to bring your nervous system calm, more calm. We work with self-confidence and strength, how to develop strength in the body. We work with mood management. Some people are very anxious, and we can calm down anxious. Some people are very depressed, and we can help them become more confident. So it's all about expressing ourselves and balancing ourselves. We help people find their best self, their biggest self, that their ideas and their actions can come together and they can become the best person they can be. So that we aim for health, not just emotional health, not just physical health, but the whole person because the emotions and the mind and the body are all one piece. So when we work, either with just one person or in a group, we always start with warming up the body. We assume, and students, they sit all day, or we sit at computers all day, and the body becomes frozen. So first we just warm it up, and different body parts, these are my legs, so we turn, we warm up the neck, so we get the whole body moving, the blood circulating. And when that happens, the emotions, we start feeling things again. And so the second part is, what are we feeling? Are we feeling happy? Are we feeling not so happy? Maybe he's sad that day. So we develop the themes. Sometimes, often it's anger, but we get it out of the body. And then we begin to understand, where did that anger come from? Who am I angry at? Oh, I am angry. And we become responsible that way for our own emotions and our own communication so that we are mature in the world, in our emotions and the way we express ourselves. We do this with the therapist or with the teacher 
and we do it together in a group so that this is how people, we know each other in this way. And now we're about to have a kind of a live interaction with a student who's going to demonstrate some problem we may see in the schools, that parents may see, and that teachers may see.
感觉现在就很轻松，很快。I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Good. Your face is happy. 大家好，我是一名高三应届理科生。没错，就是九月份刚刚升到了高三。在来到这里。认识安逸老师之前，我刚刚经历了我的高三第一次月考，成绩和以往一样，还是那么糟糕。不知道我从什么时候开始就有了一种这样的想法，我觉得我自己好像样样都不行，是那种什么都不行的都不行。我在学校里也没有什么朋友。成绩好像永远都是那样，不太行。就连简单的体育运动，好像我也不太行。这种感觉到了高三，尤为的加深了。我在高三的生活里，繁重的学业和一次一次接一次的小考，让我觉得。自己真的就像一个格格不入的丑小鸭。在刚就在刚才刚来到这里的时候，我觉得这里的一切都让我很压抑，很不舒服。就在刚才，我还在想，安逸老师怎么会有这这,这么讨厌的老师？我不能做，他还要硬拉着我去做一些动作，真的好讨厌。但是就在刚才，安逸老师带领着我做舞舞动放松的时候，渐渐的，我就觉得有一股神奇的力量，让我的心慢慢的放松了下来。安逸老师就像一个认同我的小伙伴一样，让我觉得自己好像不并不有那么糟糕，我好像也能做。好久都没有这种感觉了。就是那种觉得自己能行的那种感觉，不知道你们明不明白？安安老师的放放松，让我的心真的放松了下来。真的很感谢安安老师的这次舞动放松体验，也希望我在下一次月考中能取得好成绩。同时
，希望在明年六月份，所有的高三学子都能取得优异的成绩。嗯，谢谢大家，同时也谢谢阿云老师。So, the question is: from the very beginning, if you think of this as a story without words, observing the story. So I noticed when the student came in, first of all, that he was small, making himself small. But what's important is not just with my eyes; I felt in my body what his body is. And we call this a kind of empathy, but in the body, kinesthetic empathy. So we're trained. Part of the training is to make our body sensitive, so we pick up, we feel what other people's bodies are feeling. It's always important, not just the eyes, but I felt and I saw him coming in, almost making himself smaller and smaller, and. When he when he came in, I there's another rule in therapy which is verbal, nonverbal. The same thing is to try to meet someone where they're at, to be on the same level. So if he's like this, I don't want like this, which would be too frightening because he's obviously frightened. So I tried to make myself a little also, not too too much. But to kind of harmonize a little bit, and by that doing, I'm communicating something very important in therapy, which is I'm okay with whatever, whatever you bring me. It's okay. We can work with it because in therapy, so often people are afraid of our anger, or we're afraid of it. We're afraid of the secrets that we hold. A good person, so to be accepted by someone by the therapist is very important. And again, because we're not sitting in chairs, we don't accept them just with words. We accept them by modifying ourselves, by joining in their movements a little bit, a communication of "I can accept you." And then when he comes in, I begin to kind of take those movements in my own body, and so we're beginning a kind of communication. You can think of it as a dance. So again, my body is mirroring. We call it mirroring, and actually, this is mothers and children do when they go goo 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 and they make noises and faces. They teach the child the beginning of communication. So it's all about communication, but not words. I will mirror you. I will work with you. And so, as he came in the room, I didn't know the secrets. The secrets were just the beginning of feeling. There's fear. There's wanting to be small. What else? And so sometimes I will, what we call, exaggerate. And this, to me, is like an image, a movement. It's not a picture; it's an image of fear. We make it stronger until we can both say, "Ah, yes, that's fear." Ever. This is the second part, the theme of hiding, of fear. When he understands that I can accept and just be together with him in a comfortable way, maybe he can. And so my communication is very tentative, and he kind of used me for support. That's how I felt when I was behind him, standing behind him like this. I was like a second person giving him strength. So that is something the therapist does: is helps to build confidence, helps to build strength. You use yourself and your energy to help give the energy to the other person. And together we began to get a little stronger. We began to walk. Oh,、so、to go out into space is frightening. There's other people there. Someone could hurt you. So to walk takes some courage. We began to build courage, and also when you 
And I wanted him to feel his feet on the floor, which is a statement of, I belong here, I take my place, and begin to build strength, always feeling the floor. So he's not floating up here somewhere, he's really strong. And then together we began to develop the strength until it was back and forth. So at first, it was just a little bit of communication. By the end, it was really a dance, like of two people, this fully himself at the end. And then you could see he showed me how he felt strong. That was a good ending. From the beginning to developing a positive ending. And very important, and develop positive. You go very gradually and with respect. What is he showing? What is he showing? What is he showing? Until finally he can find his own strength and he can stand there like this. So it's not me, he does. And the metaphor, the analysis of movement, the metaphor is a way of saying um, this equals fear or hiding. So it always means something. That's the point. Movement is a language. It's always in a story. I read it like a poem. So there's this, there's this. These are like visual metaphors. And we translate that about Freud or Jung, and they work with dream images. I sometimes work with dream images. If in a dream image somebody says, I saw myself like this, I might have them express it in movement. And then they say, oh, that's what it means in my dream. So you work with it like it's an image. Uh, there is a list of words up here, and sometimes these words come from when we move, we can make the themes more clear, like we did with the students. This was fear or shy. Um, I'm going to act out a few and see if you can guess what they are. Stress. Here's another one. Mm hmm yes. Oh, yes. Oh, sure, yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm How, how? Positive. Here's another one. Ni hao. Confident. Here's another one. Shy. Reserved. And one more. <sighs> Brave. Strong. So, the body communicates. We sometimes, I worked in a school where the students, um, we had them guess. We had one student come out and walk. We gave them a situation like, you're going to an exam and you didn't study. And then everybody else had to guess what it was. So they learn, they learned each other and they learned how to read each other. And they especially learned you studied and you're all ready for the exam and they walked in confident. So that's something actually you can do and this is not, this can be part of education, which is like emotional education. Um, emotional intelligence or kinesthetic intelligence that you help the student really learn more about 
their emotions, their bodies, what they're communicating, communicating more intelligently in the world. So these are um, problems that we can see. Now, in this school, we also uh, did a pilot study where we taught these were adolescents and they were interested in, it's called the future of healthcare. So they were, wanted to become doctors, medical field, something like this. And there really wasn't a whole lot about emotional intelligence in the curriculum. They were studying biology and medicine. We wanted to teach them about emotional intelligence. So we taught them, we found some examples that are typical for stress for students. Um, believe it or not, that well, the first was lack of sleep, obviously, and I think all over the world, not enough sleep shows up in poorer grades, poor concentration, um, more distractible, so sleep. Another was eating, and there's a correlation in some of these studies between students who had good breakfast, some of these students had no money, and there was no food at home but their scores were always lower than the other students. And in the study, just having a good breakfast or sleep also began to raise the scores. So one thing that was important that we did was we had them track. They kept a journal and every day they wrote down how much sleep, what did they eat, what was their mood, was it high, was it low, what were the significant events in their life, did they have a fight with their parents, uh, something with the teacher, or they lost a good friend. These are important events in a student's life. And then they could see the correlation. Oh, I am sad because my friend moved or left, and I feel alone. So they could begin to learn about themselves. And then we took this journals, and we identified the key elements of stress and problems for them. And some were things like body image, I ate too much, I feel fat, I feel ugly, everybody hates me, nobody looks at me. And for girls, it was very much um, being excluded. All my friends sat together at lunch and they didn't invite me to sit. And I went home and I felt very sad. So we identified these areas and then we just taught them three very simple techniques that I can show you here. They practice these techniques. They chose one. So for 10 minutes every day, they practice this technique. And then they taught it to a friend or a family member. And then that friend or family member wrote down what were the results. So for example, for stress, almost any kind of stress, they just learned a deep breathing relaxation, which is very typical relaxation. And one I like that's so simple, it's just you count two breaths in and four out. So you go And you release all your breath, and you release all your stress and tension with the breath. You let your shoulders release and your face and relax. And you go two and and you can feel when you slow down your breath, your whole body slows down your nervous system slows down and you calm yourself. So we taught students and we taught boys who were um, hyperactive and couldn't sit still. We taught them how to calm down. And when you do this, then they began to feel more confident that they had control over themselves. And when you feel like you have control over yourselves, you get more optimistic, you feel better and you perform better. So there's a cycle teaching how to control oneself leads to more positive results. So the one was just a breathing technique. And you might try that just two in, four slow 
out. Actually, and you can do that just five minutes every day and just see how it brings down your stress level. The second one is an imagery technique that we use a lot. So if you close your eyes, imagine a beautiful place that you love to be. Maybe it's out in nature, maybe it's by the ocean. And if you close your eyes and you imagine, we call this a safe place. It's a place where you feel calm, where you feel relaxed. And if you practice it, all that you begin to train your mind that when you're feeling threatened or anxious or there's a problem, you can go there in your imagination. So you're using the power of the imagination. You're training the mind with a positive image over and over. And it's important to repeat it. It's like training muscles. You're training the mind with a positive image over and over until you can do it in any situation. So for example, if you're about to go in and talk to a teacher and you're nervous, you take a moment before, you do your breathing, you calm yourself down, and you imagine you're in this beautiful place, and then when you walk in the room, you're much more relaxed. So those are those two techniques. And the third I do is in the body, it's movement. So we notice that anxiety and stress, we often like tap the feet, or we move a lot, or we, uh, we, we do this a lot, or we bite our fingernails. So it's, it's movement. We, we can't stop moving. Sometimes we talk, 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 if we're nervous. Or sometimes if we're nervous, we just freeze. So what's important is to feel yourself strong. And I have people just stand on the ground with your feet apart. Sometimes, and just bend your knees. It's a little like martial arts training. They all do this, which is to bring your chi closer to the ground and to begin to find your strength. And I always imagine my spine vertical, straight, my feet are on the floor. Sometimes I like the image of a tree, a big, strong tree. And if you imagine that your back is the trunk of the tree and your legs go down into the ground and you breathe, you can begin to feel your strength. Whereas if you're up here, you're never very strong and, 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 and you can go get pushed. But if you're here, and we demonstrate this in class, like no one can push you over. So when you're feeling wobbly or shaky, find your strength, find your feet, feel your strength, lower your voice, lower your center of gravity, your chi here, and feel your strength. I like the combination of all three. I like the image of a tree. I like my breathing in a beautiful place. Maybe there's birds and clouds, and I'm very strong, and I'm very old, and I'm going to be here, and nobody can push me over. And this can be five minutes every day. So if you want to try an image or breathing or strength in the body, train yourself five minutes every day. Teach it to a member of your family. Do it together. And then every night write some notes, how you feel, how you feel, how you feel. And hopefully you can see that your problems start getting better and better and better by these simple techniques to deal with stress, to deal with anger, to deal with lack of confidence, um, and to feel stronger and more like yourself. So, <clears throat> just to summarize, uh, 
Uh, one of the main principles of dance therapy, we said emotional intelligence, physical intelligence, mental IQ intelligence is all connected. And we can't just work with the IQ, we have to work also with the emotional intelligence and the physical intelligence to make ourselves a complete person. And this is part of humanistic psychology, which is to reach our full potential. Again, takes emotional intelligence and physical intelligence. So we can set a goal and arrive at the goal and become strong people. We want to encourage not just the students, but we also want to encourage the whole family to start learning each other and each other's needs. How much space do they need? They need to be left alone. They need contact. How to read the body language of each other and find more harmony in the family. And the teachers, if the student is behaving in a way that makes you feel like they need attention or there's too much stress, how then the teacher and the, the teacher can accept the student and help the student go from fear and to a place of strength and wholeness. And dance movement therapy that works with the mind, with the emotions, with the body, can train us and teach us to become our best selves and our most unique individual selves that's sensitive and in harmony with the people and the world around us. Thank you. Dr. Sally, you first came to our Ming Yi Shitang, to our Hangzhou, to attend our Xinli Daya Zhibo. There are many, many many of our students and teachers who are very interested in her coming to her, and who have asked her many questions. First, I want to ask our Chinese fans to ask Dr. Sally some questions. 大家都非常想知道的问题。首先，第一个是关于他的专业领域的，那就是舞动治疗。舞动治疗呢，其实是就是通过唤醒身体，了解我们的身体，用这种非语言的方式去来让大家去知道，哎，身体到底要跟我们来去说一些什么东西呢？那其实 Dr. Selin 在舞动治疗领域已经有四十多年的时间了。那在这四十多年里，不知道 Dr. Selin， 你有没有一些非常成功的一些案例？关于青少年的，就是用舞动治疗来去唤醒了他们，来去帮助他们去来发现了一个新的自己，这样的案例可以跟我们一起来分享吗 ？Okay, the dance movement therapy is your expertise. The principle of which is to awaken and to feel the body, and try to explore what the body explores through the nonverbal way. Yes. Okay, now. Then it is very unique and effective mm -hmm. therapy. Uh, but we want to know there must have lot of successful cases mm -hmm. for you, and uh, because you have the more than forty years a career. Uh, I'm very interested in them. Can you share one of them about how an adolescent uh, get out of the mess? Mm -hmm. Adolescent. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ada. I was thinking about a school that I uh, supervised, my students were helping, and they were adolescent girls who were very shy. And some of these girls were new to the school, and they also had body image problems. They felt too fat, or people were making fun of them, just not comfortable in their own bodies. So we did a group with some dancing, but it was more about to give them power, to feel comfortable in their own bodies, to feel strong, to feel healthy, uh, and it helped them because they uh, they could make friends and they could feel better this way. Okay, the next. OK， the next。好的，那第三个问题要跟大家一起来聊一下，就是说，其实在，在呃 ，Doctor 呃 ，Selin， 在你的这么多案例中， mm -hmm. 那其实应该有呃非常非常多的案例。那在这些案例中，当然包括你刚刚分享的案例中，是不是有一些很普适性的规律，可以跟我们青少年一起来呃分享一下？这些规律是什么？帮助我们更好的去来了解自己。嗯、um, ，During all the cases， 呃、uh, ，including this shy girl。Uh, whether they have some general experience or rules mm. of them um, can 
help me to refer to parents, teachers, or our teenagers? Yes, thank you. I think one thing is um, adolescents often don't use words to describe their emotions. Mm -hmm. They won't necessarily tell their parents that they feel sad or um, they feel scared. So one thing is that's why body language is important. Okay. Do you want to tell the kids? To observe the body yeah, language, okay. yes. If the, if the child is um, being isolated, withdrawn. Um, I think the other thing, though, to parents is sometimes we think that mental health is a luxury. We feel very strongly that uh, there's a correlation between mental health and the grades they get in school. So it's very important that they feel confident, that they feel okay, and they feel okay to speak to their parents. Okay,好的,那下个问题就是说,其实您除了我们知道除了五动治疗之外,您还是在曾经担任过美国心理学会人本主义分会的一个会长,那其实从人本主义的角度上来看, okay. 每一个人其实都是在追求自我实现的，而且每个人都可以拥有自我实现的一个价值。那我想知道，其实在这一方面，对于我们现在的一个青少年教学中，有没有一些启发和一些引领性的一个指导作用？Okay, apart from the DMT, um, you are the humanistic psychologist. Mm -hmm. um, the human humanistic psychology emphasizes the human development is pursuit to the self-realization. Yes. Yeah, um, of which everyone has the potential. Okay, um, it's, what do you think that the orientation and the inspiration mm. of it to education of our middle school students? I think there's something similar happening in the United States and here. Mm. We used to teach to the rules and memorizing and facts. It's much more important now to be innovative, to be creative, uh, to think about new solutions. We emphasize um, innovation. And so we use, we, in dance therapy or other, the arts, we use creativity so students can think not just a, in the box, but we say outside the box, new solutions, new ways. And this, I think, in the new world is becoming more and more important. Okay,好,那接下来是第五个问题了。其实在中国呢,我们很多学生的家长压力都特别大,因为其实中国是一个成绩为主导的一个这样子一个教育环境,所以很多家长,呃,他也很想让孩子们进行一个全面发展,但是
and that they had something to contribute. We did some mindfulness, some imagery work. It helped them sleep because students must get sleep. It's very important. They're not getting enough sleep. And I think finally, um, I understood from some students that they were afraid to talk to their parents about their stress because then the parents would be stressed. So it's very important that the parents let the children tell them that they're stressed and don't take it personally. They encourage them to share their feelings and don't criticize them. Yes. Okay, 当我们真的深入到一些城市的时候，我们发现一些一二线城市，比如说像中国的北上广深，那他们已经对心理教育有一定的理解。但是在一些三四线城市，呃，或者是再往下的一些城市，很多人还不是很理解这样的一个心理教